Hello. Hi. Um. Hello. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I'm I'm watching the stream, but it's not. Oh, there. Hi. Okay, let me get rid of this. Um, cool. Can you hear me? Is it uh, too loud or is it uh, too quiet? Okay, sounds good. Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, I've never done this, so bear with me. Um, but I'm also a little bit excited, and uh, I've kind of been in hiding for, oh, I guess on and off for the last couple years, but um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff coming and uh, I'm looking forward to doing more of this stuff and um, interacting and uh, hearing from you people. And um, So yeah, I, I really want this to be uh, interactive. Uh, I've got the chat open here if you wanna, if you have questions or um, anything you wanna talk about or uh, hear from me or explore or whatever. Uh, I'd love to do that. Um, oh yeah, the vinyl collection. It's actually my dad's. He gave it to me. My mom uh, was kind of clearing house and uh, she wanted to get rid of it and he, he wasn't really listening to it or it was kind of in storage. So uh, I put my hand up right away. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's it's mostly my dad's, although you know I would say out of the we got seven seven squares filled. Um, I would say maybe one of them is mine, and then the other six are are from his uh, collection, and there's some pretty good records in there. But um, thanks, I uh, hey Dave, <laughs> I uh, I'm glad you like my glasses. Nice. Um, yeah, this is this is really awesome. I, I've been, uh, like I said, I've I've kind of just been hiding out, and it's it's nice to chat with people. And um, yeah, so I I I'm like I kind of wanted to come up with more of a plan than I ended up coming up with. So, um, oh, on Planets Vinyls, um, I do have. Well, I'd love to I'd love to do some vinyls in the future. I do have one old, there's one old one, there's a cool uh, um, subscription service called Vinyl Moon and they do like a compilation every um, every month, I guess. It's a monthly thing. So years ago, uh, my song Spectacle was on one of them and it's quite beautiful. It's like, uh, sorry, it's upside down there. Um yeah, it's it's a really beautiful thing with uh like a really beautiful disc. Um so I'd love to do something like that again because this is this is something I really treasure. Um Anyways, um sorry, I, I also might get distracted <laughs> pretty easily, so be careful if you if you distract me it's your fault. It's not mine. Um, yeah, I guess the plan for today, I'll probably, I'll probably just talk a little bit to the at the beginning here. Um, I would like to work on some music or like, I guess show you guys how I write music and, and kind of what I think about and talk through that. So I'll maybe start just by chatting and then kind of go into, um, some production stuff. However, I, w I want to try and keep this interesting for uh, kind of anyone, you know, I, d I don't want this to be um, purely just like how to EQ your snare or whatever, um, because I think uh, if there's anything interesting that I do, I guess it's probably everything outside of the technical parts, because I've, I've never really been a, a technician <laughs> or like a, I guess, so gro like growing up, I played uh, a lot of music. Uh, I played, I started out on piano and then uh, 
I started playing violin and I ended up playing like Celtic music, like fiddle music for um, for years. That was like a huge part of my life, playing fiddle music for my violin because they were there actually. Um, and uh, then I went and started playing jazz in high school and I played upright bass. Um, and uh, like kind of learned guitar and kind of learned drums. And I guess my point is that I've never really, I never really have, like I don't have a specific instrument. I've never, I'm not the type of person to really hone in and learn one thing really, really well. Um, I tend to kind of just do a lot of different things at the same time. So um, I think that maybe reflects in my music. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but uh, anyways, the overarching point is just uh, I hope there's something interesting for, for everyone. And um, yeah, nice. Um, so I guess uh, last couple of years for me, uh, in 2017, I did a EP. Um, and that was kind of my first like big project. And it was a big step for me and like I kind of wanted to follow it with a another big step um, so coming out of that I had some pretty bi uh, big plans for uh, the next EP I was going to write and um, you know five years later I'm still I'm just finishing it now um, I've kind of I've kind of finished oh thanks Blade um yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it's called personal space. Um, I'm glad you dig it. It was. It was definitely. It's definitely like a pretty uh, accurate picture of a previous version of me. Um, and I, I. I guess through those, through the last five years, uh, I've had a lot of changes in, you know, who I am and what I'm trying to do and. How I spend my time and energy and what I believe in, um, and so it was hard to keep up. You know, I had a, I had a plan of how I was going to write another EP, and I wanted it to have some um, bigger ideas. You know, I wanted to write something with with things that kind of came from one track to another, and um, not just a collection of tracks, but like a piece. And um, Yeah, it was just it was hard to keep up with myself, basically. So, um, the the biggest thing was probably that I just don't think my production skills or my even my musicianship, like I hadn't practiced singing nearly enough. So, um, I've kind of spent uh, like five years just practicing, getting better. Uh, and working on other people's music, which has been super inspiring. I really recommend um, to anyone out there who, um, whether it's music or art or anything that you're doing, um, if you're stuck, it really helps to work with someone else um, and work on their thing, not not just yours. Because um, it, it might seem like you're not working on your own project, but it really gives you another perspective to look back when you're working on something that's not yours, that doesn't like fall within your little arms. Um, and you can't, you can't hold it so tight that you never let go. Um, so uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like uh, finishing up a lot of stuff uh, that I've wanted to finish. And, and, and it's kind of the first time I felt ready to finish uh, this record, so um, it feels good. It's also a little scary, um, but um, in the end, I mean, the record that I do have is about uh, about that process. So, um, got a question here about. Uh, practicing songwriting structure um, and another one about um, 
So I'll start with this one. Uh, do I have a background in writing or literature? Uh, my lyrics are intricate and verbose in a way that I don't hear very often in this genre. And that is a very intricate and verbose question. And I love that. Um, Gam is asking if my, do you guys want my mic up a little bit? Maybe I can turn it up just a tiny bit. Um, I do my, so my dad's a writer actually. Um, I try and read a lot. Is this a little better? I can turn it up. Yeah, my dad's a writer, so I was always, um, um, I Lord Piro. Um, I was always, um, I guess around writing, although I never thought that I would be a writer ever until, uh, one day I just blinked and realized that I s do spend a lot of time writing. Um, I also spend a lot of time reading. I think that really helps. Um, if you are trying to be inspired as a writer, you should be reading. Um, anything, reading anything. I, I find that I, I can't write if unless I'm reading. Um, so... I personally like, I like fiction. I like reading old books, like old Russian lit. Um, and uh, kind of doing American stuff like uh, Walden right now. I'm reading Walden. Um, I like that kind of old stuff, but um, any reading anything w will inspire you to write. So that would be my biggest recommendation. Um, so that's kind of the baseline to be writing. Um, and going back to the question about uh, songwriting and getting better at that. Um, it just takes, like anything, like everything, it takes a lot of work. Uh, you have to do it again and again. And, and kind of as I was saying before, uh, I basically spent five years writing songs that like never... Uh, well, you know, some of them kind of percolated. Um, in the end, uh, the the songs on the record that I'm wor finishing right now um, are like five-year-old songs. So um, you can continue to work on something that's old, but it is very difficult. Um, so <laughs> but... Really, I uh, I think the biggest strides that I took w was when I was writing stuff and not releasing it, not really showing it to anyone, just writing. Um, you have to do that, and you have to get a sense. Um, it's it's like music. You have to develop a mechanical ability to do it, and then inspiration is separate. So um, you need to practice, basically do it every day. It's like s uh, singing to everything, honestly. If you sing every day, it's not going to sound good every day, but on the days that it sounds perfect, um, you will be your body will be ready to sing. Um, and it, for me, it used to be when I was unpracticed, it would be once in a blue moon, I would um, feel ready to sing, and also it would be one of those days that my voice sounded good and the recording uh, sounded good and everything, and, and f like, f oh, thank God, I have a good recording. Um and so practicing doesn't guarantee that you're going to be good at it every time, but it will make the chance of being able to capitalize on some inspiration or some sort of um, spark uh, a lot better. So I think um, I still haven't figured out that part, you know, how to be inspired more often. Um, still working on that. But I think uh, if I have any advice, it's probably just do... Uh, do things that you don't already do. Um, like right now, uh, my parents are kind of uh, renovating, um, and it's a it's a really old house, and uh, there's a lot of stuff to take down. And I'm doing that, and I'm not really, I don't really know very much about renovation or uh, residential construction, but I've just been doing that with them, and I find that way more inspiring than sitting at my desk 
trying to write. Um, so, you know, I come back from that and just like that, I've got all these ideas, um, where I could spend a whole week just, you know, head in my hands trying to come up with something and come up with nothing good. So that's maybe my only piece of advice there is, uh, branch out your experience and you'll have more to write about. Um, and doing things that are really different from what you normally do will actually inform the things that you want to write about. So if you have a message you want to convey, often, I guess take this with a grain of salt. This is how it works for me. Um, if, you have, if I have a message that I want to convey, if I go and spend time doing something completely unrelated, usually that will inform uh, a poignant way of uh, expressing that message. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. That's kind of how I. That's kind of how I write music. Um, I try and take experiences and things that don't seem related, um, and then find the connections. And that's what's interesting um, about anything, probably, in my opinion. Um, I hope that reflects in my music. Um, yeah, I really think uh, balance is probably the most important thing out of everything because there's uh, nothing... I would say there's no such thing as better, uh, only different. And... Um, it's... The only thing that's better is to be more balanced in whatever way the balance should be. And everyone has their own balance of what taste is and um, what, th what they think sounds good. But anything, anything can be interesting. Um, nothing is inherently interesting, more or less interesting than another thing. Uh, it's just more how you balance that thing with other things. So sometimes um, I kind of like the idea of contrast and complement. So some things uh require contrast to make them interesting um where uh something opposite will will bring out something interesting about the original thing um whereas other things maybe uh i guess it's all relative so sometimes you want to pick something that complements it and that will bring out certain other things about a, th a given thing. Sorry, a lot of things flying around. If you have a thing, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there to work with, and um, you can choose uh, to either contrast or complement that thing. I think that's um, pretty important. Um, and everyone has their own balance. So, yeah, back to the idea of balance, that's uh, kind of paramount over anything else. There's nothing... It's easy to, to look for better, but in the end, uh, it should just be balanced. Um, nice, sorry, just reading the chat here. Uh, cool. So the uh, subject of the stream was... Um, Making simple things beautiful. I think I think that's what it was called. Um, and I think that's probably the hardest thing for me. Um, where I tend to make things too complicated, and it takes a lot of work um, for me to make things keep things simple and keep things uh, as as bare as they can be um, because I think that's probably the most honest form. Um, and maybe everyone goes through that. I don't know um, if you guys feel the same way. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I just, if I don't keep track of myself, I will overcomplicate everything. Um, and so I've kind of come up with some different strategies um, 
for music and and I guess they kind of apply to everything um to keep things simple and so hopefully when I get into Ableton here we'll maybe go over some of that stuff um and I just kind of want to show how I would go about making something simple um into something beautiful and not boring because that's that's the that's I think probably the driving force that keeps that makes me want to make everything complicated is that I'm worried it's going to be boring <laughs> and so um freshly sunlit saying that's relatable so th I'm really glad that I'm not the only one that feels that way <laughs> um so it's a it's a very delicate line to be between boring and I guess between simple and uh, beautiful and not boring. Um, yeah, why don't I, I'll maybe, uh, it's kind of weird just sitting here with nothing in my hand. I'm going to grab my guitar. Um, um, can you guys hear that? Is that coming through? Hectic Asylum's asking about drums. Yeah, we can probably do some drums. Um, can you hear this uh, guitar? Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, we'll we'll here. I'm gonna jump into it. That's um. Oh, Brandon's here. Hey, Brandon. Long time. How you doing, buddy? Um. Quick question from Brandon here. I'll do that. Uh, transitioning from part time with school to full time musician. Um. Yeah, it's been kind of crazy. The last couple years have been... Oh, was the transition loud? Sorry. I don't know what you guys are getting on your end. <laughs> um, I hope this is okay. Um, yeah, it's been kind of a crazy couple years. I am, yeah, doing music full-time right now, I guess, kind of. I'm trying not to phrase it that way to myself because... Uh, I don't want it to, I'm afraid that it'll feel like work. I want to keep it as much, um, I was always afraid to do uh, music full time because I was afraid it would feel like work. And I was, it's like the only thing that keeps me uh, here. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I can't, I have tried and I physically cannot go without music um creating music or playing whatever I, I just i i can't it's um really difficult so i i'm morally morally terrified that one day it would be kind of dead and not i don't know i don't know if that's a healthy way to look at it but so yeah i'm kind of doing music full time right now some freelancing and um uh it's been great it's tough. It's like a lot harder than having a job. Um, but it's also everything. Again, there's no such thing as better, just different. So it's difficult, but challenging in an exciting way. And I think I feel more like myself than I ever have. So um, it's... Uh, it's good for now, at least. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, I've got Ableton here, if you guys can see that. I was just kind of messing around. Um, I've got a Rhodes in my studio. It's in the back there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and uh, I put these stereo mics on it. 
and um, going back to the idea of something simple um, a way that I usually like to start working is like just pick one note or one thing and do it over and over so I've got this like long track um, where I'm just kind of playing one or two notes <laughs> um, and in here I'm sure there's something interesting again I think uh, it's really important that doing something again and again makes it gives it um, that feeling that I think everyone is looking for in their music which is something that's real um, and it's it's hard to capture that it's hard to tame that. That's the hardest part. So um, the way I do it would be to get a lot of material and then f find a small chunk that I want to use and use that. So I'll maybe just play it. I was just uh. Oops, that's my vocal. So I yeah, I also have like a, I was just, r I wrote a couple lines this morning, so we'll probably work with that. Um, so it's quite quiet. Um, if anyone out there is a producer, I try and run uh, everything at like equal volume. So I want it to be that when I turn something off, the v the volume doesn't change because everything that's louder sounds better. So um, you'll see me put a lot of these just gain buffers. So I'm just going to turn it up a lot. I hope this isn't too loud. Is that all right? Um, so that's even with the piano off, actually. So the piano's not even on in that in that part, and you can really hear um, creaks and clicks and stuff. It might be a little bit too rugged, so I did turn the piano on. Can you guys hear that? That's all right. Disco Disco is saying that my voice is very soothing, and I really appreciate that. That's the best thing I've heard all day. Um, anyways, so yeah, just like, you know, a couple notes. I think it's a D flat and a... I think it's just a fifth there. Um, and I'd probably start by getting rid of this low end stuff. Um... Uh, the key command, okay, yeah, so pulling up these effects, there's this, um, yeah, sorry, I, I, I should have uh, explained what I'm doing there. Um, there's this cool thing called, uh, it's called LES, Live Enhancement Suite. It's free, it's like, it's a, um, it's just an add-on for your computer, and basically what it does is you create, so it's up here, um, it's called LES and you create this text file, <laughs> it's like, it's the funniest thing. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it's kind of annoying. You create a text file to make a little menu of what you want to come up, and there's like a format, so, um, and each, each like title is accompanied by a search key. So it's basically, when you, so when I double right click, I get this menu that I've made, and if I click on one of these, it's going to search in Ableton for the text that I put in in the menu, and then put that at the end of the chain. So it's like um, really handy, um, and it just keeps me focused. And I honestly, I probably m have more stuff in here than I need to, but like things that you're always reaching for, it's nice to not have to go to the corner. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just right clicking and doing this. Um, so let me close that. Um, 
yeah, so we got a couple things here. We've got, I guess every, to me when I look at, um, when I look at sounds, I think of, I guess, three things. Um, one would be the tone. So what are my, what are my actual pitches that are in there? And what's the, what's the, um, tall chief? I don't know, um, I don't know if that's Tall Chief software or not. It might be. It's the best. Whoever, um, whoever made that little tool for for Ableton is the best. That helps me out a lot. Um, anyway, sorry. Back to this. See, I'm I'm easily distractible. Um. So tones. Yeah. What like what pitches do we have here? Uh, like I said, it's you know we've got a D flat. can see those in the EQ, they're right here. This is our A flat, and this is our D flat. Um, and that's probably where I would start with this, is what which of those do I want to hear more? Um, naturally, you know, naturally we're hearing, in this section at least, the A flat is ringing out a little more. Maybe I want to take that out, so I might go like this. and leave just the trace. Um, I gotta raise the mic a little bit, even more, okay. Oops, how's that? Is that a little better? I hope this is okay. If I play, can you hear me over the music? Maybe that's the issue. Perfect. Great. Um, so I've got these two notes. Yeah, I mean, what do I want to hear? Maybe I only want to hear this and leave just a trace. Um, I would say this is a good situation to try and equalize the loudness um, because obviously it sounds really nice when I blast it, but I'll usually, if I'm making a big boost like this, I'll want to check it on this side. Um, make sure I'm like kind of in the same ballpark. So I'm taking five decibels out of the overall volume. Um, and I just, I, I think this is a really good practice um, that helps make your decisions a lot more better. More better, that's right. Um, and I kind of like that. I like it where it's ringing. And I, but the thing is, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have done this with just that note. I like that there's a little bit of that root note in there, where you can hear the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that note. And there's a lot you can do with that. So. Um, Yeah, I, I think um, this is usually how I start things. It's just something really simple and try and figure out what from that I want. So so we've got tone. We also have timing. And like um, I chose to just play these on quarter notes. Like this is our metronome. But notice that it's not perfect because like I'm not a robot. And these are the kind of things, um, these little details that are imperfect are, are kind of what stack up and make and give you that end feeling of, of realism. So if you have a chance to work with recordings rather than MIDI, I would say try and, try and feather in a little bit of that. Um, and this is pretty workable. I could change this. I've already pitched it up. I've pitched it up. I started out in a lower key. Um, and I pitched it up. Originally it was this. Um.
So I quite like that. Um, so we've got tone, we've got timing, um, and then also texture. So this is what I would consider to be everything outside of the notes. Um, and that's, to me, that's these clicks. You hear here. I can probably turn this down. I mean, the, the low-end bumps and stuff. Maybe not the... Like, you can really hear some stuff in there. So maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I got to choose. You know, what? where do I want this to sit in, in terms of everything else? Um... Usually I'd probably go for the high end, but I think today I'm going to go for this low end kind of thing and roll it off. So one thing right now that I'm noticing... That's a little bit crazy. Um, it's a little bit uncontrolled in the volume. Like we've got a lot of it's kind of going all over the place. So I might um, compress it a little bit. Um, this is a compressor I really like. It's also free. Um, yeah, talking about iPhone mics, uh, does anyone ever record stuff in their iPhone mic? I think that's fantastic. I think everyone should be doing that. Um, I, have a, I have a field recorder that I use but it's just not something you always have in your pocket. So there's something, um, the mic sounds great on the, f on the phone, and the fact that you have it in your pocket most times uh, is worth more than any quality you could have in the mic, if that makes sense. Um, that's my opinion about that. So I do that all the time. Um, yeah, this, this is a really good compressor that has a lot of character. And it's free. I love uh, free shit. Um, yeah, I would not pick this for something that I'm just trying to regulate. I'm like, I'm trying to smash this thing to pieces right now. So I'll probably just push the hell out of it. Um, one thing about compression is you hear it in the attack and feel it in the release so a short attack you'll start to to get a little bit of um so look how let's do this you get a little bit of hair on it um and if i turn this way up it smooths out so I would say that's my biggest advice about compression is you can hear it in the attack. So I, wa I want to be able to hear this. Go like this. So I kind of want to see where am I, where I'm cutting the most. Kind of at the eight. So we've really regulated where the volume's going. We've also lost a lot of the touch, so th I don't know if this is um, necessarily the right path. Uh, one thing I do quite often is do something and then undo it. <laughs> so what I might do right now is take this like kind of exploded thing regulated a bit I might even take this because this is really ringing so like on one side of the compressor I boosted that tone and now I'm kind of thinking I might take it out on the other side but you still hear it so this is this is where we've come So you hear it ringing a lot more. It's almost like more of a tone. Um, 
I don't know if I like that. I might. I'm kind of want that high end. I kind of miss that high end. I don't know. Let's roll with it and see what happens. Um. Okay. Yeah. So I've got this. I mean, I also did a couple different. I think I inverted that. I put the bottom note on the top there. It's a little bit more delicate. Another note there. Maybe we'll use this. Like I said, it's hard to tame. The hardest part of having something that feels real is taming it and making it not messy. So um, I like to make chunks, tick chunks, that I can refine. You know, if the timing is weird in any of these later, like this one might be a little bit late. Um, I might deal with that. So I think I'm going to take this chunk. I kind of like the way it sounded without um, with that higher note. Uh, so I'll loop that a bit. So um, a lot of options. It's kind of magical. Um, I like that it's ambiguous. I can do anything, but it kind of gives me like a foundation to uh, to work from. Otherwise, I'm just kind of floating in nothingness. Um, let's, um, yeah, sorry. I've got this. So I kind of wrote some lines this morning. Um, songwriting is difficult for me. But when it's easy, it's easy. And like I said, I've been doing this kind of renovation project lately. Um, and it's pretty inspiring. Just a lot of words and a lot of ideas come from that. And I kind of, uh, you know, it's a weird part of my life right now for me. Um, and I think working on like this old house has been interesting to draw parallels um, to how these th weird things in a weird old house kind of relate to weird old me. You know what I mean? Um, so I just wrote a couple lines uh, and did a super quick recording. It's kind of ugly, but who cares? Um, and I'll just play it. Meanless how could I then see sick from standing starts at jettisons, jagged parts, but everything comes close. Um, yeah. Just an idea, and I I did put in a uh, quick harmony, just staying on one note. Again, with a lot of flexibility, I can kind of do whatever. This is kind of often how I start my songs, is just a line or two, and I try not to get too far into the vocal, but far enough that I can uh, work with it and kind of figure out what the song wants to be. 
And I think that's kind of maybe what I'm trying to do with every sound is figure out what the sound wants to be. So, you know, this Rhodes track wants to be something. What is it? You got to figure that out. Uh, it's the same thing with songs. Like, it wants to be something, um, and it's your job to kind of lead it there. Um, so, yeah, I'll play it again with the... I just did... Jagged parts, but everything comes first. So I don't know. Um, um, whomst are you? I'm me. Who are you? I'm Sean. Um, yeah, there's a, so maybe I'll take this note out. There's a lot of different ways that I could take this. So again, w trying to find things to like, um, pin down where I'm going to go. Um, and this is kind of an endlessly, there's, maybe I'll switch to the keys here. Um. Um, okay. This uh, piano plugin is called. Uh, it's the Imagiro piano. Imagiro is a really wonderful artist, and he has a piano plugin that uh, you really should have. Um, it looks like this. It's just a couple things. It's like a. Actually, you know what? There's a question way back about. Um, how to get these kind of nice foley, like the intangible stuff um, in a way without maybe recording it. And I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of nice instruments that are out there right now that include that. So this is w a good example where this has, you know, if I hit the pedal, you can hear it. Can you guys hear that? Um, Basically, he's built in all the little nuances of a f of a real piano, of his piano. I guess he recorded it uh, at his at his home, and you can hear the keys coming off. And each each time you play it, it's quite different. It's so beautiful. Um, so I use this a lot. Um, and then I, I kind of, so one thing I tend to do, another production thing, uh, this piano VST, I think it's uh, 20 bucks on his website. It's, there might be something specifically for Bitbirds Create Together, though. Um, someone's got a plug there, but yeah, yeah, I I bought it from him. It's twenty bucks. It's like it's like a couple sandwiches, you know. I can make those sandwiches at home. Sometimes it's not what you need because it's like so delicate. Um, but I like that you can change the tone a little bit. So this is like up or down shifting the sampling. So this is probably closer to the original tone, not so down, uh, like down pitched in the sample. Um, nice. Um, but yeah, I, I really like, uh, I think uh, something that someone said to me once was that your brain only has so much power to use at one time and, um, it has to process everything you give it. So the more stuff you put in front of your eyes, the less your brain can think about what you're hearing. So I, 
um, like to hide everything into these little racks um, and also um, make my decision flow much smaller. So instead of having, you know, all these different plugins to turn on, like this is another plugin I use a lot, which is Reels by Audio Thing. So if I have this open, I have Valhalla Room open, I have, you know, the piano open, there's like, you know, 80 different things that I can play with right now. And that's really bad, and it's overwhelming me. Um. So I like to hide all these things um, and just set them where I want them to be and make a couple knobs. I've got four knobs here, so um, this one just turns on the reverb. It's like a little bit more... This I'll probably turn back down. Um, gives it a little bit more space. Uh, this is the Audio Thing Wires plugin, which is another one I love. It makes it, puts it through like a Soviet wire transmitter makes it all wonky so that's called wonk so again one knob on or off this is off this is on and then I guess it turns up how wonky it goes um, and then I've got the cassette which is reels um, which takes out a lot of the low the very low end stuff and pushes it up in here in this kind of 1k you really hear it there so, fold it up and you've got n no decisions to make, right? So let's go back to this vocal. Figure out what chords Aimless, we're going to do. Jagged parts, but everything comes flush. So that's kind of one way I could take it. So that was one E flat uh, to the minor three. So G uh, G major with a seven on top to the minor two. To the five and suspended over the root. That's something that's a chord progression I use all the time these days, so it's kind of boring to me. Aimless, alkaline, and seasick from standing starts at jettison. Jagged parts, but everything. Um, that's kind of what would come to mind for me immediately, but this, um, I think there's a lot of different ways we could do it. So maybe we can try something a little bit more jaunty with like a, like a step down kind of thing. Uh, let's see. So E flat to the E flat seven. flat to the A flat minor maybe let's see let's see how that sounds Aimless, alkaline and seasick from standing starts I jettison Jagged parts, but everything comes flush. Totally different moods. Um, I'm not sure I prefer that, but it's like, it's a vibe. I guess it's just an infinite, you could do anything. And this is what I struggle with most is like wallowing in what is it? What is it? What do I want it to be? Where should this go? Um, um, 
I think I want this to sound a little bit more melancholy. So let's maybe start in the G minor or the um, C minor. We haven't really had any C minor going on. So that's the relative minor of the B flat. So this would be another step down, kind of chromatic. Um, maybe that works. Needless alkaline and seasick from standing starts at jettison. Jagged parts, but everything comes flush. There's me playing piano. It's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's, uh, Oh, my piano reminds me of your mom. I love that. That's that's like uh that's fantastic. You guys want a little more volume? Let's do that. There's this woodpecker that comes and hits on my chimney and I can it comes every day and knocks its head on the thing. I can hear it just right now. It's like Pretty annoying. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Uh, how's this? Needless alkaline and seasick from standing starts at jettison those jagged parts, but everything comes flush. It's kind of dreamy. The piano, the piano is maybe giving it a little bit of a soft feel. Is the uh, volume a little better now? Um, I might go. Yeah, this might be a guitar thing. Alkaline and seasick from standing starts at jettison those jagged parts, but everything comes flush. So I don't mind that. Maybe we'll go with that. Um, chromatic chord progression. Well, maybe we'll do that. What do you guys like? I think that was. Uh, let's see. It was four. Yeah, so minor six. Uh, step down there. If it becomes too loud, you have to tell me. And it's not my fault. Needless alkaline and seas. Um. Needless, 
music from stand and start. Oh, notes don't work. Um, thought process for coming up with chords. Um, we'll start with the melody. Um, this melody I just picked because it was pretty ambiguous. Um, I, f I, I guess, uh, I just kind of knew that it, uh, would have a lot of different ways that we could take it. That was the, that was my main criteria of having something to, uh, to work with today, um, was to come up with something that would be flexible. So th I feel like this vocal is very flexible. You can flip it around and it fits in different keys. And like on that last time when I played that, I think the thing with the chromatic progression is like usually you have to really slot it in. Um, so that one last turn there, when it that note didn't really work with the way that I recorded this melody. And you could, of course, change that. Um, but I've already got this and I don't want to sing in front of you guys. I could, I would, but uh, you just, you don't want to hear me. I have to take everything like a hundred times. So it'd be here for an hour. Me just screwing up the vocals. Um, and then, you know, this, this, this recording also very ambiguous. You know, this could go, anything could come underneath. Even wrong notes. You know, anything, you can play anything under that, and it it just gives you some flexibility. So I guess that was my thought process for that. Um, the chords, I mean, that comes from learning music theory. So like I said, I did spend quite a few years playing jazz. That's a big thing. Uh, but anyone can learn theory. You just have to practice, really. Um, it's mostly a case of knowing what notes come in what chords. And what are the what are your tension chords and what are your where do you relax right? And every chord can kind of be different. So like the root here to go up to the minor two, it's got the it's got a bunch of notes that are not in the root. Almost all the notes are not in the root. And then if you, I guess I have I have brought a couple notes back, so it feels like kind of part of the same feeling. Um, if you've done this down, I guess that's the note that brings it back. So that is the root. Um, that makes it feel like it's, uh-oh. Oh, can you guys hear? Oh, anyways, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I, I like that kind of version of the chord because it feels the same, but there is some tension there. So you might so you might start on the root, build some tension, and then if you go to the four with the major seven relaxes some of the tension but it still wants to lead you back somewhere or you can bring the tension again so you know every every chord change is a um, fork in the road right do I want tension do I want to go to the f to the five again this is like the least tense version of the five uh, sorry I'm not a very good guitar player I've got a couple voicings I can play and that's it. Um, so th do you want to go to the five or do you want to go to the four? You know, that feels natural. That f f There's not very much tension there. There's some tension there. So whenever you build tension, you have to release it. So there's just, um, I guess, I mean, a lot of it just comes with experimentation, but if you know what notes are going on and you really think about what notes are there, you learn to find out what are the tension notes and what become, what are the ways that they resolve, and then you can kind of just do anything at a certain point once you get good enough at it. And I'm I'm not that great at it, but 
Um, so that's kind of how I go about chords is like where, you know, where do I want to start? You know, we don't have to start on the root. We don't have to start on the one. We can start in a place. We can start on the five, right? Or maybe I'll take the roads out again because it's just muddying things up. So we can start on the five. Needless alkaline and seasick from standing starts at jettisons. You know what I mean? Like we can start in a way that we can start here. Needless alkaline and seasick from standing starts at jettisons. There I rose. There I landed, right? You got to pick when you're landing and when you're moving. I don't know. Th all these words I'm throwing around. I don't know how to explain it. That's how I think about chords, though. It's like, where where do they want to take you? Where are you and where do they want to take you? And you kind of have to come back home at the end of the progression. Or you don't have to, but... Um, uh, musical tension does not have to be released. You're right. Um... Well, it does. You can... I don't think there's any way to only build tension, but you could have, you could have an entire chord progression that uh, moves upwards. That um, There's a cool Bruno Major uh, video, actually, where he's talking about... Um, I forget the name of his big song, but I guess he wrote this melody with the idea of... Um, when it wants to resolve, you don't let it, and you just keep. And he just kept going up and up and up, and um, it's partly because he can sing really, really well. Um, so he just keeps going up and up, and uh, I think that was inspiring for me. So yeah, obviously there's tons of ways you can look at it, but um, I do think that for me, I try to make natural sounding music. So my choices are usually ones that allow for the feeling. I, if you have too much tension, it gets in the way of the feeling, unless unless that is the feeling, right? So I just think there's a lot more possibilities when you when you use natural chords that um, don't always put you on the edge of your seat um, because you can fill out that space with other things um, sonically. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's a it's a blank canvas. You can do anything. Anything can be done. So I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, can I try it on my sketch? Let's see. I would have to do this on the piano. Okay. So we're going to try and do this in a way that doesn't resolve. Um, so we'll start in a place of resolution. kind of if you have moving chords like this you have to choose a direction that's another thing um well i don't know maybe that that might be just my own limitations i usually i have to either be going all straight down or straight up if i'm just moving pure tension so i don't know if i can play along but let's see um so we do something like this Needless, no, that's too natural, sorry. Just cut to the chase. Hmm. What did I play just then? We'll build, okay, we'll st that it's natural, but it's less natural than the root chord, so we're still building, technically. Needless, 
kulanen sisik Fuldstændig start sa Jagged parts but everything comes flush So you, that would be a good way to transition to Oh sorry Something like that That's a chord progression I like that is actually full of tension from the minor 2 to the, f- the 5 You hear that in a lot of my songs um yeah you could yeah th- actually you know what that's that's a good example so we could do that we could we could av- c- avoid the root and the four uh completely and just go minor 2 so f f minor here to the 5 the b flat um and that wants to go here or it wants to go here but instead of doing that, we just go back. Needless, alkaline and seasick From standing starts I jettison Those jagged parts, but everything comes flush Sorry, that's kind of, you have to relieve it eventually. I guess... Y- uh, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. I feel the need to relieve it eventually. So if I have a bridge that goes pure, you know, two five two five, eventually I want to go to the four or the one or the minor six. You know. Anyways, we're getting a little uh in the weeds with theory here, and I might be out of my uh my expertise <laughs> quite shortly um um yeah so the i guess the question is um yeah sigur rós um i don't know if i think that's how you say it uh that's someone that could probably pull that off i'm i'm not that cool i'm not that intellectual um i think uh yeah tension i mean this might be a life thing like life is boring if you don't have any tension you know the i guess the difference between stress and stimulation is less than we think um but in life if you have no stimulation nothing going on if you have too much stimulation it's stress If you have no stimulation, it's boring. Um, But um, I think music is the same way. So if you have only stimulation, it can become stress and it it can become unpleasing. Um, If you have no stress, there's nothing interesting about it. So that's kind of where I'm at um, with, with... everything in life especially music and as you can see my chords i always pick chords that come back but you know everyone has their own balance so ah gone too far in this direction i think um yeah my theory is a little dusty and i find myself playing the same chords i would love to i think what i'm going to do when i have some spare time is uh, some transcriptions um and uh yeah dig dig back into um some things some of the patterns that i've try and try and get rid of some of the patterns that i've created in my brain because i i play the same chords over and over and i have just things ways that i go and it's hard to break away from that so i think i'm going to probably do some um transcriptions um when i have some time um Bearded Bozo, thanks, man. I appreciate you. Um, cool. Okay, let's c- let's come back to this. Um, someone said they like the piano. I think. Well, let's let's do something. This is another thing that I a bad habit that I have is just to just to like, 
mess around forever and then it's a whole day goes by and I, I haven't done anything you know i haven't even touched this i haven't recorded anything i think i'm gonna get a little bit of guitar um Painless. Um, I try and limit myself to uh, only a couple notes per instrument, except for maybe piano, um, and to really be intentional about what notes from what chords come from, uh, you know, what, what place. Because if you play... So that was a mistake I made in the past, was every instrument had to have the full chord. It had to have the root five, three extensions, everything. And every instrument had, uh, like, you know, eight m voices going on, and it just becomes a mess. Um, so I think I'm going to get a little bit of the guitar and then maybe go back on it with the piano. Or no, you know what? See, look at me. I'm just stuck in between everything. <laughs> Let's just decide. Just decide, Sean. Needless, alkaline and seasick from standing starts I jettison those jagged parts, but everything. So I kind of like that. Um, sample out some guitar harmonics. Make some chords out of them. That'd be nice. Yeah, let's see where this goes after I... I think these are the chords I want. Alkaline and seasick from standing starts I jettison those jagged parts but everything comes flush um, so it's the same thing twice but instead of going so this is another one of those things when you learn the notes that different chords share the root note sorry the minor two and the five share are basically the same chord um, except for two very important things um, so they kind of balance each other out um, and then the minor six and the four are extremely related they're basically the same thing um, you can play the minor six over the four So what I did was one time through I played the minor six and then the second one. Oh no, sorry, I'm not. I'm all over the place. Um, 
So that's one that's one pair. Another pair, and this is the one that I used, is the minor third and the minor six. These are more similar than they sound. So one time through I played the first time I sick from stand minor six to the four. And then the second time I went. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't even remember what I just played. How could I see sick from standing start side those jagged parts? But ignore everything I just said. I didn't even, I couldn't even remember what I played. That's hilarious. Uh, okay. Here's something that I want to do first before we move to other stuff. I like these chords. Uh, I don't want to give myself the option to play with this MIDI because I will. And this is like, this is kind of like when I make a little rack. I don't want to have to make any decisions. This is the audio now. Needless so I printed it. I have nothing I can fiddle with. I can't change the notes. I can only change the tone and work with EQ. So, let's leave this, this sounds nice. Can maybe come up a little bit. Give myself some headroom. Okay. Um, you guys are digging the sound? He's sick. From stand and start side jettison those jagged parts, but everything comes flush. Um. <laughs> See if I can even remember the chords that I played because I. I forgot as soon as I Someone said harmonics would be nice. trouble hitting the harmonic with my finger. So I think it would be nice to have some a little bit more rhythmic. Uh, Rhodes almost seems like just harmonics too. Yeah, there's a lot of harmonics going on the roads. That's another thing we could probably mess around with. Um, is instead of bringing out the tones in the in the roads, I kind of stifled them. But there would be some harmonics that you could bring out here instead of the um sorry distracted harmonics are great uh, you should be looking for those in huntington um i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna instead of playing the harmonic in the guitar i'm gonna dig it out of this note because we've we've got some so let's see Needless. 
Is there a name for those lushful chords that use tones together, like B and C? Um, I don't know. If there is a name, I don't know them. Or maybe I made it up. There might be a name in my head. I don't really think in words. I think, uh, yeah, I, d I don't know. <laughs> um, do harmonics come from just playing instruments super softly? Um, Uh, harmonics come, harmonics are part of every note. So the only, the true, the truest tone is a sine wave at a pitch. But realistically, everything has some or less, you know, some or more of uh, different resonating um, higher notes. And that's what you hear is the final sound. So, so we've got, uh, there's harmonics in everything, but the quieter you play, the more, um, the less overpowering that root note is, the root sine wave at the frequency. So let's let's look at this. Um, so here's our. This is the pitch, right? If you take everything out. That's what the pitch is. Um, but it doesn't sound like a guitar until you give it everything else. So there's lots of stuff up here. You've got a bunch of different... So this is our first harmonic. It's an octave. Um... a little bit ringing there. Sounds like I'm seven. -ish. You know, these are all these little that's in there. You know, all these harmonics are in there. Every sound has is full of harmonics. Um, but the quieter you play it, the easier it is to dig them out. So, so like I said, I, I'm gonna dig it out of this guitar track. So rather than being about the note, it's about the, the octave there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on it, which is a Haas delay. I don't know if you guys know what this is. But basically your ear, um, pan like where a sound appears on the spot, in the physical spectrum is not only determined by the volume in either direction or the pan, it's also dependent on the timing. So any sound that's that has a difference between the left and the right uh, that's less than 50 milliseconds is perceived as the same sound rather than two sounds. Um, and that's the Haas effect. So part basically a sound that comes here hits this ear first before it hits this one, and that's how your brain locates it. So 
So if I put this, so I can pan this left. But if I put a lag on the right side to make it seem like it's hitting my ears, it goes way farther left. It's a lot more realistic. And I don't even have to pan it for it to feel like it's coming from a weird place. So I like this. Um, anyways. So we kind of go from this. This is the track to this. And she's sick. And I like the way it rings and it doesn't get in the way of the other. Um, the other stuff. Let me do this. I went too far, that's why. Okay, we're going to warp. Just a bit. Just figure, just fix my crappy guitar playing. So this is something that I would put some tape on. Yeah, we got to go to drums. You guys want to hear the drums. Okay. Quickly, let me put some tape on this. Yeah, that's too weird. I like reels. This is, um, again, see, I always make a rack of the controls from the GUI that I want to control. So uh, I'll turn this down. I really like this. And I can make it. I think that sounds a little bit more um, emotional. But it's also a little bit tense. Like in the high end. So I might uh, roll that off. think with this one I want some volume control so I'll go back to this just to regulate a little bit so it doesn't come in and out of the mix louder notes don't jump out so much and I like that granulate the guitar but we want people want to hear drums let's let's put some drums in this so i think this is nice i think part of building a balanced mix is finding spaces for everything and putting things out on the sides that you don't need to focus on so for this song i would want to be focusing on the lead and then i've got these double tracked like i just tracked it twice and put one on the left and one on the right for the harmonies. So there's one far on the left. I just recorded it twice. It's kind of messy. But that puts it out on the side. And it's basically right in the middle. But everything comes flush. Um, okay, so usually I do my drums. Personally, I like to side chain so i basically in my projects i put everything in one group i'll side chain the kick and then also gate from the kick i'm not sure not that many people do that um and blades asking no vocal processing um i really um try and keep my vocals as raw as possible i might eq that although this um, if you have the right mic, 
there shouldn't be too much work to do. This, I think, just looking at it visually, I wouldn't want to compress it. I think it works. Normally, I would have some compression in my vocals. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is kind of how I run the drums. So I'll put that on there, and I'll put that on my bass track whenever that comes in. Um, and let's see. So I picked out some random samples we can maybe work with. I think, so for samples, I really like free stuff that's just on the internet. I think, um, again, I don't think just because you paid for something that, uh, makes it better. Um, and I like really small sounds. So these are drums. For this I might, <coughs> let's do like a, where does it start? <laughs> Alkaline and seasick from standing starts at jettisons. Jag and um, I usually start my drums in MIDI, and a lot of people laugh at that. Um, Mike for my own vocals, yeah, I do. I use a Telefunken CU twenty nine. Um, which I love. Uh, it's got a lot of delicacy to it. It really suits a quiet vocal performance. So yeah, it kind of makes it difficult for me when I'm trying to do something louder. But whatever. This is all wonky. Let's move this over. Um. <laughs> So something I do a lot is all. Sorry. Painless, alkaline and seasick from standing starts at Like I said, yeah, I, I like to work in MIDI and then print it to audio and work from there. Um, MIDI is nice because you can audition stuff, and I've I know it sounds weird when you put it in the, this thing, but if you get it to work, if you know how to work it, you can work it. People laugh when I do MIDI drums. It's on a little sensitive. Um, but I might take this and put this little clap. These are nice claps. I think Dead Mouse released these like 10 years ago. It's part of a, some Dead Mouse thing. I don't know. Like I said, samples, I would rather have a million free samples than a one like professional sample pack because uh, I en always end up um, messing messing with it. So what I'll do with this is pan that on one side. So I use this one. And this one I'll put on the other side. And like, uh, I got a, this is a nice feature, copy value to siblings. So I've got, uh, I can uh, transfer the same filter value over, maybe open it a little bit. Send these over. So it's the same. Alkaline and seasick from stand Painless Alkaline and seasick um, I'm gonna, s this is a master delay, I don't know if anyone uses this, but I'm just gonna Painless like This is a good place to like delay everything all these Everything in the track is going to be 20 um, And I'll probably do what with this? I use Spiff a lot, which is a, if you don't know, it's a transient processor, so you can isolate just the um, 
just the transient part. So it sounds like this. So, so right now we're looking at just the part that it's working on, and you can turn it up or down. This I would probably cut a little bit of the, it's just a little bit snappy for me. Leave the 1K. So I'm gonna take that out, so you have the option of cutting or boosting. And when I do that, I can turn it up. See how much I've lost in just the, so I'll turn this up, three. That way it doesn't like hit you in the face so much. Jagged parts, but everything comes flush. So I think I said before I do things and undo them. I took those transients out, I'm going to put them back, but just roll it off. So I like I took something out and then now I'm going to put it back in a different way. So we end up with something that's similar to the original sound, but different in the way that I like it. I don't think my speakers are precise enough to hear that. I just don't want it to, I want to leave room in the mix. The lyrics, eh? Here, I'll quickly write the lyrics out. I've got them over here. Hang on. Here are the lyrics. Or I'll send them in the chat. Okay. Now let's get some uh, low end. What am I looking for here? Um, I love these Just Blaze drums. Another thing that's like 10 years old. Some good stuff in here. Jesus. Probably, okay, so I'm dulled down the kick. Let's see what's going on here. It's like way too floppy for me. Painless. 
So this is the advantage of not uh, doing a vocal track that you're attached to, is you can find the right tempo for the song. So I want this to go faster. English, alkaline, and English, alkaline, and Something like that. English, alkaline, and Sick from stainless, alkaline and seamless, alkaline and seamless, alkaline and seamless. So this has. like to look at it in its side and figure out this is probably something I'd normally do in my headphones so there's a little bit going on the sides it's pretty centered though so I want to add something that gives it a little bit of width um, let's see what else is here a nice finish. Some more free stuff from the internet somewhere. So we've got this low tone. I want to send it out to the sides. So usually with my kick drum layers, I'll like put one in the middle and one on the sides. This is a little problem problematic. With this kind of host delay, you're going to get some weird phasing in the low end. Oh, I think I'm going to hate this. Um, yeah, this isn't bad. So one thing, uh, I really like the Kush Audio plugins, uh, which are like, these are designed for the, they've got these 500 series preamps that, sorry, um, these Omega things, they've got a preamp that's like super clean, and then I guess you're supposed to plug in these, which give it a either like a transformer or a tube character, like this 458 is a tube, and then this is an API kind of style saturation, so I guess it's, uh, anyways, I like using just the plugins on their own. Um, get some nice. Um, English, just a little bit. And grab some of the like. Keep. 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 Jagged parts, but everything comes flush. Clearing out some stuff that I don't really need. See if I've got a I like this uh, tender spring stuff. Hmm. I don't think I'm 
me to find one looking for you. Maybe this. English. This I might want to do. Normally, um, normally I might record myself doing like a shake or a grab. Like a, I have this packet of salt I got in Iceland, or in Spain. Sorry, it's not salt; it's sugar. I don't even I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I have this sugar packet that I got in Spain that I t taped up so it didn't spill everywhere. Um, yeah. So I might try and record myself doing that, but today we'll just. One real kick. This I want to like blow out. Maybe I'll I like really short sounds. Yeah. this out a little bit. So I'm going to print this. I don't know if this is going to work. Sorry, I'm kind of in the zone. I haven't said that much in a while. Um, it's been a while. It's been almost two hours, eh? Boy. I'll maybe... Uh, I'm going to finish this up, and then uh, we can maybe... If you guys have any questions, 
yeah, if you have any questions, throw them in there right now. I'm just going to finish this. Um, and uh, I will uh, stop just being in the zone. I got in the zone a little bit here. I think it's sounding kind of nice. Um, Speaking of harmonics, yeah, this harmonics. on the sides which side do I want side Jagged parts, um, but everything yeah, then, uh, let's see. Let's quickly go through this. Yeah, this is just something I built um, for myself. It just uses delay. Um, and pretty much, it's like one's on the right, one's on the left. And these knobs control the uh, time. And then... Uh, Yeah, that's <laughs> that's all there is. And then this just pulls the dryer wet up and down. Although usually I'll tend to use it here or full. You don't you don't really want to be here. That sounds weird. Oh, it's on the top. I can't hear it. That's how that's how that works. Um uh Demono, yes. Soothe is great. I use spiff more. Soothe is nice when you need it. I use Spiff way more. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, uh, I I got I got in the zone here. This is fun. I r I like streaming. Um, I think I'll probably call it for this for the day. Um, but maybe we can do a couple questions here, and then um, uh, yeah, call it a day. Um, What is my favorite time of year to compose in and why? Um, I think uh, that's a good question. I don't know if I have a favorite time of year. I do have a favorite time of day, and that's the morning. Um, I don't get very much done in the evening anymore. I used to. Not anymore. I'm an old man now. Um, I like getting up early, having coffee, sitting down, and working on stuff. Um, I feel like the morning is kind of mine, uh, whereas the night is everyone's. <laughs> so I like I like getting up before the sun comes up. Um, I haven't been lately, but um, that's that's my favorite time to work on anything to write or. Um, I'll switch to this. Place. Um. Yeah, to to write or mix or anything, my ears are most accurate in the morning. Um, so, all year round in the morning, that's my favorite time. Um, what about spiff? Do I like more than soothe? I just find that that's usually what I want. Spiff to me is like EQ8. It's like just a, it's just an important 
thing that I use everywhere to sculpt what I want, to try and find what I want, to try and find what everything uh, wants to be. Um, so to me, that's like the missing utility tool is, is something to take transients or and get rid of them or turn them off or change them. Um, and do I mix as I compose or wait until I'm done? I definitely mix on the go. Um, I uh, I'm always mixing. This is this is kind of nice to me. I think this project. Endless, I like to leave a lot of space um, and have the drums kind of up front. I think um, I think. Uh, someone asked how I did the kicks for Don't Think So Hard. Um, and that's basically it. It's like, it's not about the kick. It's not about the sound. It's about how it relates to everything else. So Don't Think So Hard is one of my favorite mixes that I've ever done. But I really um, let the drums be at the front. And so I did a similar thing to this where I had like three layers. Um, one deep, one kind of more of the tone of it and then one out on the sides and did a bunch of stuff and saturated it and then got them to a balanced place where it didn't feel unnatural and then put them um, right at the front of the mix. And then after you go through mastering and everything, it all comes together and rather than feeling loud, it just feels impactful. So, um, uh, Do I have music lessons? No. Maybe I could. I don't know. That's um Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll do more streams like this. This is this has been really fun. Thank you so much uh to by the way to everyone here. Um it's been really amazing. I my heart is really full right now. Um from hanging out and hearing from you guys and um doing this and yeah, maybe I will do another stream. Um I'd also like to thank Bitbird for uh uh having me on here. Because it's like, uh, it's a master class. I'm not a master. I'm just a guy, you know? I'm just a, just a little fellow doing my best. So, um, yeah, I, I really appreciate um, every th everyone at Bitbird and everything that they've done uh, to support me and being on board and backing me. Um, they're really, really wonderful people, and um, they've had a lot of patience with me. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely did have, um, uh, I definitely did have music lessons as a kid. I took piano lessons and, um, I took piano lessons, violin lessons, uh, maybe one or two guitar lessons in my life, but that I mostly t taught myself. I took a lot of upright bass lessons, um, when I was playing jazz. Um, and I've actually been thinking about going for a violin lesson with my old violin teacher recently because I think anyone could use a lesson. Um, and I'm definitely not a great violin player anymore. Um, and I need some practice, but um, I think, yeah, anyone could take a lesson. Um, let's see. Uh, do I keep everything dry in my mix? Yeah, everything bone dry. Bone dry or fully wet, that's it. No, nowhere in the middle for me. Um, vocals too, never, if if any reverb, the tiniest little bit. I think, and that's maybe the main, that's probably the hardest thing for me to do when I work with other people is like, it's always like, uh, I'm like, okay, this sounds good. And they're like, oh, we haven't put any reverb on the vocal. I'm like, yeah, I know, it sounds good. And it's just, it's like, I don't know, I'm the, I feel like I'm the only one that does that. But I, yeah, I really like to create space from having different parts going on rather than just putting it in a, in a s reverb or room or whatever. Um, can I dim DM you on Discord about something later? Uh, sure, I'm, I'm not really on Discord very often, but... If you're on Instagram, that's usually where... Instagram is probably the best place to reach me. Um, I try to be pretty responsive there. Um, but if you do send me a message on Discord, I'll, 
Uh, I'll try and remember to see it. Um, and uh, earlier you mentioned that you derive a lot of inspiration for lyrics from reading books. Is there a good book I can recommend? Um, let's see. Um, I read... Um, I love uh, Kurt Vonnegut. And if you haven't read uh, any Kurt Vonnegut books, you really should. Um, and I just read uh, uh, Cat's Cradle. And I that was a really wonderful book. And I couldn't put it down. And it's just, it's like light, but also philosophical. I think you'd dig that. Try uh, Cat's Cradle. Um, nice. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, one last thing. I do have some, last year I made some sweaters. They're green sweaters and, um, they were kind of a hit. People really liked them. So I was pretty excited to make some more merch and, um, keep your eyes out. I'm going to, I've got some long sleeve tees that are coming out, uh, hopefully this week and they're pretty dope and they're a little bit more affordable and super wearable. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, okay. You know, I think I think we're going to call it. It's been a long two hours. Um, actually, it hasn't. It's felt really short. I was worried if I would be able to s uh, fill the time, but I, you know, I could do this for days. And uh, you guys are a really good hang. So, um, yeah. I'm I'm going to call it here. But uh thanks again to everyone for watching and for asking questions and listening and and for listening to my music and 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 supporting me. Uh I yeah, like I said, I'm just a guy. I I really appreciate everyone out there who's listening to my music and um and all the messages about you know when it when it makes sense to you, like when it when you feel the music uh, making sense to you. I, I love hearing that so much because I think, um, yeah, life doesn't always make sense, but there's certain things, uh, that you can really hold on to. So if that's, if my music is, is one of those things, uh, that's just, that's all I could ever want. Um, anyways, so I hope everyone is safe and staying healthy and drinking lots of water. Um, yeah, take care. Never be